Hi people, so I'm going through something about a newspaper backlog, that is to say I'm reading newspapers from a few weeks ago because they were kind of gathered up whilst I was abroad and um, yeah, so I'm going through them. So this is a few weeks ago, July the 23rd, um, but I think it's still relevant. Um, I'm just going to read the report out uh, because I, I completely welcome it. I think it's a good thing. Um, I think it's a justified thing and I'll explain why. Um, before I get into this, I've never made a secret of my total contempt for Just Stop Oil and similar groups. Um, and I am so, so, so sick of this idea that criminality is protest. I mean, maybe protest in the minds of those doing it in the sense that they're angry about something or they're uh, supposedly protesting against something. But in terms of it being a legitimate form of protest, no, it's not. It's and I'm sick of this idea that um, vandalism or messing with people's lives or sewing up anarchy is legitimate. It's just not. Whether that be far-right hooligans, Islamist thugs, or eco-zealots. I'm sick of this idea that if someone's angry about something, they just have green light to do what they want. Because otherwise, it, you, you know, the, the implication is we could all do that if we're angry about something. Um, anyway, I'm just going to read this out. The report's by Ali Mitib in the Times. Stars fight injustice of M25 protest prison terms. Uh, I welcome the prison terms. I don't welcome the so-called stars intervention. More than 1,100 lawyers, academics, artists and celebrities have called for an urgent meeting with the Attorney General to address the injustice of the sentences given to derived environmental activists. Roger Hallam, 58, was jailed for five years last week for coordinating the protests that disrupted the M25 over four days in 2022, during which 45 activists climbed gantries in the motorway, forcing the police to stop traffic. Daniel Shaw, 38, Lucia Whitaker de Abreu, 35, Louise Lancaster, 58, and Cressida Geffen, 22, were each given four years in jail after being found guilty along with Hallam of conspiracy to cause a public nuisance. Now, chances are they'll be out before that turns up, but... They're fairly stiff sentences, and I absolutely welcome it. Um, anyway, I'll continue the report. Um, the jail terms exceed those given to two just stop oil activists who scaled the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge, Dartford Crossing, in October 2022. Last week, the Prime Minister faced calls to intervene in the case of activists known as the Whole Truth Five, and the UN Human Rights Commission have described the sentences as deeply troubling and disproportionate. Well, firstly, I hope the Prime Minister ignores these demands and is on the side of the majority. And secondly, the UN uh, Human Rights Commissioner, when we look at what's going on in this world, when we look at the torture of dissidents, when we look at people gunned down by the police in countries like Bangladesh, you know, when you look at some of the things going on, for the UN Human Rights Commissioner to take time out for these people getting a sentence for sabotaging a public motorway, for messing with people's lives, just shows um, a delusion. It, it shows an arrogant contempt for ordinary British people. What about the human rights of the people that they're messing with? That's what makes me so angry about this sort of attitude. Um, and the report continues. Uh, Dale Vince, a millionaire Labour donor, and Chris Packham, uh, Vince has funded Just Stop Oil, incidentally, although he claims to have stopped doing so. Um, and Chris Packham, surprise, surprise, the naturalist. Packham, incidentally, has encouraged the harassment of MPs outside their own home. So I don't have much time for Chris Packham. I don't think he's a decent fellow. I think he's a nasty individual uh, for promoting this stuff. Um, you know, because I mention that because... Often environmentalists are deemed to be just decent people who care, but there is a very, very deep arrogance there and a deep contempt for the rights of ordinary people. Um, anyway, uh, I, I deflect, excuse me, a uh, call for a meeting, that is Dale Vince and Chris Packham, call for a meeting with Richard Herner Casey, the Attorney General, with Packham describing the sentence as a grotesque miscarriage of justice. In a letter to Hermer, more than 1,100 signatories, including Lord Williams, a voice to mouth, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, 
Sir Geoffrey Bindham KC, one of the country's most distinguished human rights lawyers, and the artist Dame Tracy Emin, echoed the call by Vincent Packham. The letter, which is signed by Sir David King, the former chief scientific advisor to the government, Chris Martin, the Colpay frontman, and Sir Philip Pullman, author of his Dark Materials trilogy, described the sentences as one of the greatest injustices in a British court in modern history. Shame on them for saying that. Shame on them. A miscarriage of justice would be an innocent person jailed for something they haven't done. So for them to conflate this with that is a disgrace. Um, other signatories include the food writer and broadcaster Hugh Burnley Whittensville, Toby Jones, the star of Mr. Beatrice's post office, Danny Boyle, the transporting director, Lord Cashman, and the singer Annie Lennox. With prisons at breaking point, how can these sentences be seen as anything other than insanity? The letter says it adds that the five activists were fulfilling a necessary service by alerting the nation to the grave risk we all face. The trial at Southwark Crown Court was told that the M25 protests caused economic damage amounting to £765,000 and that the cost of the Metropolitan Police was more than £1.1 million, not to mention the enormous stress that they were causing, causing thousands of motorists. Thousands. And, you know, that stress is about people trying to go about their business, you know, people getting to work, people going to personal engagements like... Um, you name it, weddings, funerals, um, perhaps seeing off a loved one who might be going abroad for a while, um, perhaps a child's graduation, perhaps uh, bringing someone to, you know, perhaps a medical appointment, because that isn't always by ambulance. Sometimes it's, you know, people have to use their own transportation. Um, so I've sort of got two feelings. So on one hand, it's welcome. I think the, the tough sentences are absolutely justified. This was not a peaceful protest. They were putting lives at risk, their own lives, but also the lives, the lives of the emergency services, you know, who had to then go and bring them down. Um, because when you have that sort of situation on the motorway, I understand there was a police officer injured in one of these incidents. I'm not sure if it was the same one. Um, Hallam is a vile character. You know, he's a shadowy figure who has been influencing this unrest for years, literally years. He's one of the founders of Extinction Rebellion. Um, I think he's a very shadowy figure. He talks in dystopian terms about overturning governments. He very much reminds me of the Unabomber, Ted Kaczynski. Um, so far, he hasn't planted any bombs. I say so far. He's in jail now where he belongs. As far as I'm concerned, Roger Holmes, a domestic terrorist. I actually had the opportunity to see him a few years back, and um, I, I passed it on. He was speaking in um, Sunderland Minster and I was invited um, by someone to go and see him. Uh, I, I chose not to at the time as I didn't trust myself, quite honestly. I thought I would have lost my temper and confronted him because this was when things were starting to kick off in terms of what they were doing to the public. Um, but I, I think it is grotesque and disgraceful that these celebrities are talking about miscarriage of justice. That is uh, abuse of that term. A miscarriage of justice is when someone is jailed or otherwise punished for something they have not done. But these people are guilty. There's no question on what they've done. You know, it's not like mistaken identity. They've done it. And I think if they hadn't got a prison sentence, the public would be infuriated. Now, I've often criticised sentencing and I continue to maintain that far too often criminality doesn't result in the sentencing that it should get. But I am pleased that these were tough sentences. Now, I'm not naive. They're probably not going to serve the whole time. Uh, they'll probably be out in two thirds of that time. But at least they'll serve some time. At least it sends out the message that there will be consequences. I am so, so, so sick of this idea that people could do what they want and hide behind protests. Um, it's criminality. And as for sending out a message, as for them uh, doing a duty and sending out a message, this is another thing about eco-zealots I have a big problem with. Their arrogant notion that only that method is a valid one. That if anyone disagrees with them, if anyone um, opposes what they're doing, they're somehow ignorant about the issues and they don't care about climate change issues or environmental issues. It is so, so thoroughly arrogant. They're basically saying our way is the only valid way. And if you don't agree with us, then you're a climate change denier or... Um, you know, you, you're ignorant to the issues. Um, 
I mean, their campaign is a complete and utter failure. A complete and utter failure. Keir Starmer um, is a lot of things, but I don't think he's I don't think he's a fool, and I don't think he will pander to these people. He knows, he knows how unpopular they are with the public. He knows that they have affected the public. And Starmer comes from a little bit of Kamala Harris. He comes from a prosecuting background. Keir Starmer, for all his faults, I think he does believe in the rule of law. So he's not going to go out of his way to defend these criminals. Why should he? In fact, I would argue if Starmer was to intervene in this, if the Attorney General was to overturn this, they would be going against the will of the public. They would be showing contempt to the, the democratic will of the people because the vast majority of people would say this is justified because they took the decision to sabotage a motorway to mess with thousands of people, to put people's safety at risk. Um, I really have no problem calling Hallam a domestic terrorist because this is what terrorists do. They use extreme measures to try and bring attention to their cause. Um, now, granted, they're not blowing people up, they're not massacring people, but make no mistake, they are messing with people's lives and they are using extreme measures to try and force the government to do what they wanted to do. You know, they, on on the rare occasion that they, I believe some of them actually did stand for election and they got trounced. So that shows you where the public lie with this. Um, it's true that the Green Party done well in the general election. I think there's a lot of young people that are that care about the issues. Um, all I would say about people who support the Green Party, if you're kind of a floating voter, well, it's up to you who you support, but the Green Party of England and Wales supports these tactics. You know, they're not responsible environmentalists. So um, I really feel a mixed feelings. On one hand, I welcome the sentences. On the other hand, I'm kind of disgusted by these celebrities and lawyers who are trying to make them into victims. They're not victims. The victims are the innocent people they were messing with. Um, and, you know, it's this sort of thing that makes people think celebrities are elitist, that they live in a bubble. Um, Emma Thompson's another one. It doesn't say that she signed this, but, you know, she's been involved in just stop oil demos. I mean, the arrogance, the, the sheer arrogance of just saying, oh, we're going to support these these zealots they won't see it that way but the hell with jill and joe public they don't stop for one second to consider the ordinary people that they're messing with in fact they would probably say oh but they're doing it for the the good of all but how does messing with people's lives a how does it reduce co2 and b how does it how, how does it actually bring about what they want in fact what will happen is the more they engage in these sort of protests the more starmer and his government will be under pressure to be against them Starmer's already criticised them. I don't think Labour should have taken any money from Dale Vince. But, you know, Starmer at the moment, he has a very healthy majority. But if he wants to win the next general election, he has to, and his party, has to understand public sentiment. Now, these riots, I don't want to detract from the issue at hand, but the riots are an example of this. Um, it's right that they're coming down hard on the far right, and the thugs who are, you know, harassing minorities and so on. but. They cannot sweep aside issues like um, the perceived inconsistency of policing. They cannot sweep aside concerns about illegal immigration. Um, and likewise, they cannot dismiss the anger the public feel about eco-zealots. Because I, I, I will comfortably say that the vast majority of people are against them. They do have supporters in the public. You know, people who wouldn't necessarily join the ranks and get involved in that stuff, but they will make excuses for them. And what I've noticed from those people is a very smug way of looking down on others. They sort of think, oh, if you criticise them, you're a climate denier. or you're, There's a real smugness, a real sort of I know best attitude from, from their defenders. Um, and I'm sick of saying it. I would challenge those people and I would say, can you point to a single thing that they have achieved? And don't say, oh, they've got attention because there's negative attention. You know, people don't look at what they're doing and say, oh, well, that, they're bringing attention to flooding in, in Bangladesh or Ethiopia. They are, they're just aggravating the public. I think as, as a campaign, Just Stop Oil is a complete and utter failure. If they want to point to anything that they have achieved, it's, it's infamy. It's negative attention. Well, 
that's what they've got, but has it achieved anything? You know, um, I suppose some might say Labour is rolled back on the government's plans regarding new oil licences and Labour's, um, Labour's taken a different direction. But I don't think that, you know, the fact that there have been tough sentences here, there's no way Starmer is going to intervene there. He's just not going to do it. And if the Attorney General had any sense, he wouldn't do it either. I mean, I, I've long argued the Court of Appeals out of touch, but, you know, this is an occasion where they've got it right, where the sentence actually does match the crime. This isn't a trivial thing. How dare these people say it's some sort of little trivial thing or it's a protest, it's a peaceful protest. They sabotage the motorway. They put lives at risk, including their own. Uh, they mess with thousands of lives. That's a very serious offence. I mean, I would say that's terroristic sabotage. How is that any different than blowing up a railway or, you know, trying to sabotage a power station or something? When you go onto a major motorway, that's that's a hostile act. That is not a protest. That is a belligerent, hostile act. So anyway, um, mixed feelings. I think those sentences are justified. I'm pleased that Hallam is now in a prison cell, hopefully contemplating, well, you know, he's an extremist and I think it's very, very difficult to de-radicalise extremists. But, and of course, they'll see themselves as political martyrs. I think it's a disgrace that the UN Human Rights Commissioner finds the time to criticise the British justice system for this. When we look around the world at some of the things that are going on, you know, they should get their priorities right because... Really, people are tortured for being dissidents. Um, it, it's just pathetic that they would then look at this and say that, you know, are they say suggesting that protest includes the right to do as they please? It's, it's infuriating, actually. Um, and this is kind of a strange situation because, you know, the majority very clearly feels a certain way about these people. You know, they have contempt for what they do. Yet the public feels a huge sense of frustration that they continue doing what they do. And up until this point, it was very lenient sentences or, you know, they would get prison sentences and they come out and start all over again. I do think that, you know, I welcome the prison sentence, but there also has to be practical approaches about their funding. I think judges should be empowered to cut off their funding so they can't continue doing this. Um, now, regarding the question of overcrowding, I how does how do they find prison spaces for them? It's the nature of the offence. It's a serious offence. This isn't like spraying a building, which I think is wrong, but you know, is in a different category. This is sabotage of a motorway. That's a very serious offence. So of course, prison's justified. And the prison situation, it's not absolutely full. It's a, it's a you know, pressure point, but people are also asking this question: How is it the government's found five hundred prison places for the rioters? Well. There's a lot of questions around prisons at the moment. I think the answer is build more prison places. I do not want to see extremists escaping justice. Um, anyway, I'll wrap this up. It's absolutely justified. Uh, you know, cry, cry me a river for these people. They've got what they deserve. Um, if you're defending them, you're part of the problem. You're showing the same contempt for the public. Uh, and that's my message to anyone defending them, including those arrogant celebrities who haven't bothered to stop and think about the people that they're affecting. They just don't care. You know, they've latched on to this cause and they think, oh, these courageous people are campaigning, but they're not thinking about the method. That's what I find infuriating. And as for Packham, you know, this is a guy who has promoted harassment of MPs outside their own homes. He thinks it's justified for people to um, protest outside the homes of MPs, not their offices, their own homes. So Chris Packham, as far as I'm concerned, is an extremist. Um, no matter what kind of gentle demeanour he displays, I think the man's an extremist. I don't like him. Um, and I'm fed up of eco-zealots in general. 